What did you dream about last night? Before you head into the comments to detail every last moment of the strangest visions you ever had, consider how weird dreaming really is. Yes, there are various, variously conventional ideas on exactly why our brains take us along these nightly journeys, and we will cover that in today's video. But alongside all the more expected explanations, there are some truly out-of-this-world notions that dreaming might actually be more than simply random stories that we tell our sleeping selves. A lot more. This is Unveiled, and today we're answering the extraordinary question, do we enter a parallel universe when we dream? Do you need the big questions answered? Are you constantly curious? Then why not subscribe to Unveiled for more clips like this one, and ring the bell for more thought-provoking content. Dreaming has long been one of the most mysterious aspects of the human experience. As we drift into the realms of sleep, our minds conjure up vivid and sometimes bizarre scenarios, leaving us to wonder about the nature and purpose of these nocturnal adventures. As strange as it all seems, however, there has been a lot of scientific thought and theory put into trying to understand dreams. So before anything else, let's start with that. At its simplest, dreaming is a complex and dynamic process that occurs during the rapid eye movement or REM stage of sleep. This time is characterized by heightened brain activity, which in turn generates vivid imagery in the mind's eye. Of course, dreams can be mundane or fantastical. They can make perfect sense, they can make no sense at all. And researchers generally believe that they're influenced by a myriad of factors, including our daily experiences, our underlying emotions, and our subconscious thoughts. There have been plenty of in-depth studies into dreaming over the years, and especially in the 20th century. But three of the most notable and widely referenced are Freud's Interpretation of Dreams in 1899, Hall and Van de Castle's Content Analysis in 1966, and the Activation Synthesis Model in 1977. Sigmund Freud's groundbreaking work in many ways laid the foundation for modern dream psychology and analysis. Freud proposed that dreams were a window into the unconscious mind, revealing repressed desires and unresolved conflicts. And while some aspects of the Freudian approach have been heavily criticized, the emphasis on the symbolic nature of dreams and their connection to the subconscious remains influential. It was more than 60 years later, though, that another major shift took place, following the content analysis study of 66. Here, the researchers Hall and Van de Castle systematically logged and analyzed thousands of dream reports. They identified common themes and symbols, providing valuable insights into the universality of certain dream elements and their findings paved the way for a more empirical approach to dream research from that point on. Finally, however, and developed by John Allen Hobson and Robert McCarley, the activation synthesis model of 77 broadly suggested that dreams are a direct result of the brain's attempt to make sense of particular neural activity during REM sleep. This was something of a pivot then, as dreams are here seen as a form of brain noise that the mind simply organizes into cohesive narratives, or sometimes not so cohesive narratives. This model certainly challenged Freud's ideas, highlighting the biological basis of dreaming. And today, researchers are usually caught somewhere between the two ways of thinking. Either dreams are a reflection of ourselves and our non-physical minds, or they're the creation of traceable neural firings within our physical heads. So now let's enter a parallel universe. The connection between dreaming and parallel universes perhaps understandably arises from the surreal and often nonsensical nature of dreams. In a dream, the laws of physics and reality seem to be suspended, allowing for otherwise impossible scenarios. In your dream world, you may inhabit a version of you that can fly or change faces, a version that's turquoise all over, or one that doesn't have eyes or a mouth. Seemingly, anything goes. And so, while dreams themselves still don't serve as direct evidence for parallel universes, they have long prompted speculation about the nature of reality and the boundaries of possibility. Some theories suggest that the bizarre happenings in dreams align with the principles of quantum physics and the concept of a multiverse. Broadly, quantum uncertainty posits that all possible outcomes of a situation do exist in what might be termed as parallel universes. This means that, even in the apparently real world, anything actually is possible. And so dreams could then offer glimpses into these alternate planes. Quite how, no one's really sure. 
but it's a suggestion that has gradually garnered some support. Robert Lanza is an American scientist. For much of his career, he's worked in the fields of stem cell research and cloning. But in 2007, his profile took a different direction when he published an article titled A New Theory of the Universe in The American Scholar. In it, Lanza outlines his model of biocentrism, which he puts forward as a candidate towards a grand unifying theory, a theory of everything. In short, biocentrism argues that life and the universe are inherently related to, dependent on, and created by the individual, by consciousness. It's said that seemingly key concepts such as Albert Einstein's space-time can only ever amount to speculation, and that all we can truly be sure about when contemplating the true nature of reality is that it's always essentially our own doing. The look of a tree, the shape of our hands, the passing of time, the contemplation of gravity. It's all biocentric in that none of it exists without consciousness to make it exist. The bridge between this worldview and dreaming is then quite simple. As Lanza and other biocentrists would have it, all that we do in a dream, creating and experiencing perceived realities, is also all that we do in waking life. There is no or little difference, and the two aspects of life only feel as though they're separate because we require sleep to access one of them. Lanza argues that both the waking and dreaming experiences amount only to the collapse of probability waves into an observer-led reality. In this way, the approach does somewhat mirror the aforementioned principles of quantum physics. Things only exist when we see, feel, or experience that they do. But quantum uncertainty at the same time means that anything is possible. In dreams compared to in waking life, that last part is always far more apparent, which is why we can dream fly, among endless other things. In an article for Psychology Today in 2021, taken and adapted from a 2020 book he co-authored titled The Grand Biocentric Design, Lanza explains further. In dreams, he writes, quote, We leave the consensus universe and can experience an alternate cognitive model of reality, very different from the one shared by other observers while awake, end quote. Here then, it's never as though we pass through some kind of wormhole while dreaming to enter into another dimension. Instead, it's a realization that any alternate universe that might exist does exist within consciousness. It's merely a matter of access. The waking world is an interpretation of reality shared by all who populate it. The dream world is an interpretation usually shared by far fewer and often only inhabited by one, the dreamer. It's as though on a set that picks up infinite radio stations, your dreams are those where only you are listening. So what's your verdict? How do you view your own dreams? How do you feel when someone else starts telling you about theirs? One somewhat stereotypical response whenever another person begins recounting their dreams is to suddenly drift off, to find their tale perhaps unfairly tedious. Could that feeling in itself betray something more? Could it be that you're often less interested in other people's dreams because those are parallel worlds that you're simply not part of? Lanza hasn't commented on that particular aspect, but in general, his approach has hardly gone unnoticed in recent times. For some, biocentrism amounts only to philosophy, and has yet to seriously break new ground in terms of the scientific understanding of reality. But to others, the overriding ambiguity is also key to how and why this model works. All of us live, all of us dream, but the connection between those two shared experiences has always been somewhat mysterious. Freud argued that dreaming was a reflection of our innermost selves, the activation synthesis model says it's the result of our physical brains responding to random neural activity. But biocentrism throws all of that out the nearest window. Instead, it suggests that dreaming is every bit as real as living. And that's why, perhaps, we enter a parallel universe when we dream. What do you think? Is there anything we missed? Let us know in the comments, check out these other clips from Unveiled, and make sure you subscribe and ring the bell for our latest content.